Hello, welcome to Board Games with Niramas. I'm Joseph and I'm here today with Racco. He's holding the box of Maracaibo, new game from Alexander Fister and Capstone Games and Games Up. And we are going to play a two player game today. We are going to show you how the sort of basic game works because this game is it's really cool. It's a Euro game, but you can play it with a sort of story mode or a somewhat campaign game, legacy game in some ways. It's, you don't tear anything up, you don't destroy any components, but you have these tiles that you place on the board to change up the map as you go. And, you know, new characters will, will arrive into the deck and there's really cool stuff happening. But we're not gonna show you that because that would be spoilerish. Uh, it's much, you know, it's so much fun that I you know, really think you should try it out yourself. But we are going to play what, you know, it's sort of a, you know, standard game. There are some three different ways you can play using sort of a without story. And this is the easy one. Uh, this is without any tiles out or like changes to the map. It's just a basic game. But we do have some quests anyhow that we can complete. And there's some benefits to doing that. So today I'm going to be the yellow player since there is no red player, sadly. Uh, Draco is green as usual. Now I will uh, show you most of the game on the map here, but at some points I will switch over here and you can see my player board where you can see more in detail what you what I can do on my player board and so on. But let's get started with actually well, a little bit of setup. I got two of these career cards that can you know, determine how I play the game. I could go for you know, Adventurer or for Valor. So if I did the Adventurer, let's see what's the difference on these. Adventurer, I want to get influence with two nations. This, you know, France, uh, England, and Spain out here. And we are mercenaries, so we don't really have an allegiance to any of them. But at, at some points, we can choose to help them out or fight for them. For, for a benefit, of course. Uh, we could do, if we do three upgrades to our ship, and then we can do four quests. So you know what? I think I will go for the adventure career in this game. And then that means that I will place it over here. I will put my three of my crew members onto the card in order to show that I can unlock these if I complete these tasks that I have on the card there. And then it's Draco's turn to do the same here. Now Draco could go for wealth or for power. Okay, so there's some different sort of goals he has here. If he goes for power, he wants to complete at least two quests. Now, if he completes three quests, before he sort of scores this basically, he can you know do that as a free action to sort of advance his career. The only difference is if he does three instead of two, he will get two points uh, as, you know, at the side of those two coins or doubloons. Then uh, number of assistants, if he gets this one, he wants to get at least two assistants out on the board. They're sort of people that he can you know meet up with and have, yeah, get gain benefits from. And he also wants to get eight influence in one nation or 12. Or you can go for wealth, which is, yeah, it's the same for quests. It is synergy tokens and then influence. I think Draco wants some assistance, so he's going to go for power. So he's going to take three, he's three of his crew members and put on here. And the way it works is that Draco started, well, we both start with two crew members on the ship. And we also have a, a cute Draco glass meeple out here on the ship being captain or something. I don't know what Draco's been playing out here. And then... See, we're going to put them out like this. And a really cool thing is if, if we, you complete all your uh, three assignments here, you get to flip the card, you get to put it up here, and you get a flag on top of your ship. It's really cute. Our setup part here, we will also, we each started with eight cards, and we have to discard down. Uh, so we have to take four. We take four into hand. That is sort of the standard hand size. So I'm going to do the same thing over here at my side. And then we can put one of them sort of on top of our player board in the prepared area where we sort of plan or the planning area where we plan to build it. And then three of these have to be discarded. So let's see what I have here. I have the sailor and all these cards are, are multi-use. So this could be a sailor that I could build or sort of buy, recruit for seven doubloons. And I would have to give up one of my crew members. Remember I started with only two. I can get more by unlocking these and so on. This will give me two points. And then I will get a permanent benefit here that I always get one strength, combat strength before combat. Now there is combat in this game, but it's really Euro combat, <laughs> sort of. And I, it will also give me two 
income of doubloons. Now we each round we're going to play four rounds in this game. Each round we're going to get at the minimum eight doubloons. But if I had this, I would increase that by two. And if I also got the synergy with having this little house symbol, that token, then that would get me even more income of money. Or that, that's one way you can play this card. The other way is that you can give up the card for one of these resources here. So I can sort of use this to pay some, you know, give up some tobacco or using it for the spyglass, which is something I might need to complete a quest. And then I have another sailor. Oh, wow. How did I shuffle? I have three sailors. A pioneer. He will help me when I explore the jungle down here. And then a quest hunter, which will get me more rewards when I complete quests. So if that's something I want to go for. And Mary Reed. Okay, so it's kind of expensive. And she has a requirement. England have to own at least three locations. At the start of the game, England, the white cube, is owning one place. It's sort of a setup when you play two-player game. So we would have to go out and conquer and help England out in order to be able to play her. Then the master builder is good because he makes it so that all cards after him cost mine, minus one doubloon. So that's definitely one I want. I like the pioneer as well. I am thinking I'm, I might, let's see. I don't really have a goal for it. My goal is sort of to get some influence with two nations. And then I need to do ship upgrades and I need to do a bunch of quests. So I need... Okay, so Master Builder, and then I need to get this Quest Hunter because that will give me benefits when I do quests. And this is too expensive, but I think I will also go for a Pioneer here, or like two Pioneers. I don't think I will do that much combat. Well, I need to do some combat for that, yeah, but... So I'm taking these four cards into hand. And then I can put out one card, I'm gonna put one of these Sailors out over here. Uh, as my sort of planning, this is something I'm planning to build. We have three slots for it up here. So I'm going to put one of them up here. You're not going to see it really, but you know, I'm going to show you when you need to. So uh, you can have, I can have two more in the planning area. And that means that I, at the end of my turn, I get to draw up to my hand size. So it's good to put some cards that I know that I'm going to build anyway. And three cards are going to be discarded. So we just put them in the discard pile. Then Draco needs to do the same, so let's see here. I'm not going to show you what Draco has this time around. He's going to sort of play on his own. Well, Draco has chosen four cards, and he also chose to put this treasure, or this quest hunter, out in his, I can show you over here, in his uh, planning area up there. So he can build that. He, this is like he has it in his hand, basically. The only difference is he, now it's committed to being built and nothing else. He can't get the corn or the book from it now. It's only a card that he can build or buy as it's called in this game, you buy card. So, and he has his hand, he's starting with nine doubloons since I will be the first player, I have eight doubloons and now let's get going. So on my turn, every player gets one of these uh, really big, nice uh, player aids. And turn structure A, B, C, I will do these in order. And A says that I can sail with my ship one to seven spaces. So you can go really quick in this game. I can sa sail up to seven spaces. And we all both start here, of course, in Havana. And yeah, I don't know. I, well, I can, I can keep explaining a little bit because when wherever I land, either it could be a city. And the cities have these tiles here. And these are also randomized depending on the number of players and so on. So you get a different sort of setup every time you play. And if I do that, I can deliver whatever, like this Santo Domingo here, they want some uh, tobacco. So I can de deliver that, and when I do that, I get to take one of these little brown discs and put it on Santo Domingo, which means I will free up each of these. It's hard to see from this angle, but each of these have two discs like this. So the first time I will deliver, then I can take one of these, and then the second time I'll take the second one, and that way I will free up these new actions, these new benefits, like this could get me five coins over there right away. Uh, it's basically, if it's a red background, then it's a permanent ability. If it's a teal background, then it's something I get right away. Once I have unlocked four of these as well, I can start unlocking these over here. And once I unlocked six, I can do this 10 pointer there as well. And my mission says that I need to get at least three, even better if I get five, of these upgrades. So that's something I will focus on. I will try to deliver a bunch of goods all around the map. So that is the uh, city step. If I land on anything else than a city, basically, we're gonna go on these circles. If I land on anything else, that's gonna be a village. And in a village, 
I can do actions and these actions are buy a card which is building a card basically recruiting some person or whatever from my hand or from my planning area or I can get a coin or I can discard all the cards I have in hand and get two coins and the number of actions I can do depends on how far I was traveling to get to that space so if I go just one space I will get to do one action four spaces or uh, more uh, or four be between four and seven I get two actions and then seven plus I get three actions so that's pretty cool uh, you, you want to go quick in this game basically and that's sort of either this or that or I can fulfill a quest fulfilling quest it sounds more exciting than it is it's basically these tiles this card told us at the beginning where to put quests so for instance we have one over here which needs me to play two of these treasure maps on cards we give up that and then I will get the benefit on the quest and if we go away and we will refill with new quests at the end of each round. Or I can use an assistant. If I placed an assistant out on the board by playing a card that has an assistant earlier on, then I can visit him or her and get some benefit. And then anytime in this B section, I can fulfill a career like I talked about. I can, you know, if I done any of these steps on my career, I can fulfill that. And I can start projects, which is putting out more cards into that planning area that has a maximum of three. So that's B and then a C is to redraw cards and that's basically filling up my hand to four cards here in the start. I can in increase that by upgrading my ship so I can have six cards in hand as that which is really good. And those cards, either I take them blind from this deck here or I can take one of these cards that are up on display but if I do I will have to pay a coin for each of those cards that I take here from here. And then it will refill at the end of my turn. And if you have the English rule book, you should be aware of this, that there is a errata, that there was a miss in the English rule book. So there's an errata out there. The only thing it says is that once you have refilled your hand, sort of ended your turn, then you will refill this row. So you don't take one card and refill and then take another one, like some games do that. And it doesn't say in the rule book, in the English rule book, it doesn't say what to do, but that's how it should be played. So take note of that and um, yeah. It's a minor thing. And then there's some combat team for here, but we're not going to go into that. Now I am going to go, I'm going to start playing. I'm going to go one to seven spaces. Now what I want to do, if we look at my hand here, I have some tobacco and some sugar and some corn. So I, I, I want to deliver something and I could even go to the first space here and deliver tobacco, but I think I will go a little bit further. So I think I will go, let's see, do I like my hand? I kind of do. I kind of do like my hand, but mm, the quest hunter. Wow, so I can't really do that because this place, this says that uh, I can deliver tobacco, which is good. But if I have two military strength, I can spend that to get an influence with one of the nations and I can get six coins. That would be great. The problem is I only have, you only start with one military strength, so I can't really do that. So that's not an option. So what I think I'll do instead, I am going to go just one step. I'm just going to go over to Santiago. I'm going to give up this quest hunter, not for the quest hunter, but for the tobacco. So I'm going to discard him. That means I can take one of the discs on my board. And I think here in the beginning, I think it, it would be kind of nice to just, you know, increase hand size, basically. Uh, this is increasing hand size. This is kind of cool as well. This is getting... Um, three points and when I take cards, when I refill my hand and take a card from the display, I don't have to pay for it. So I, it's much easier for me to get the cards that I want. Over here is just five coins straight up. That's not bad either. I think I'll start working on my hand size though. So I will take one of these little uh, discs here and I will go and put it on Santiago here. Now Santiago can hold four tobacco. So like basically if you're four, this game goes up to four players, everybody can do that. Go, go straight here, deliver a tobacco. Uh, the other places only have one slot. So that's first to go there. And then they're gonna clear in between rounds, but you'll see that later. Now I can also do this action. I could just go here just for the action if I wanted to. But if I'm gonna do both of them, I have to do the deliver first. In this case, it says take one crew member. So I get one from the supply. That's pretty good. And then I get to do one A action. And that's the thing I'm sort of looking for because I want to get my monster builder out. So I am going to build him. And that's going to cost me six doubloons. So I am going to pay six doubloons over here. I'm going to put him out. He's going to give me three points at the end of the game. And from now on, all my cards cost one 
be blue less, which is awesome. Okay, so he's out here. I'm just gonna stack my cards up like this on the side here. It, this game takes up fairly a lot, a lot of space. And now I only have two cards in hand. So now I'm going to do the C part, which is to refill my hand. And again, I could draw a blind or I could pay. I only have two doubloons left now. I could pay to take a certain card. The reason I might want to do that though is because if I look ahead, like I'm planning to maybe, I have to maybe go here to Santo Domingo. That needs another tobacco. I don't have tobacco in my hand. So I could draw a blind and just hope to find some tobacco. Or like out here, there is a tobacco over here, this uh, Conquer Village. So I could spend a doubloon to take this. And then I would be guaranteed to have the tobacco. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So I'm going to spend one doubloon. I get one in return here for my two. And I took this card. Now it doesn't refill, but now I will take a card blind. And I was some corn and another master builder. Wow, if I build him, you know, if I build him soon, that would be, I mean, he's only cost, gonna cost me five, right? Because I have the discount, then I would have two as a discount because they stack, so that would be nice. I only have one doubloon though. Now we refill the market here, and that's a Woodrus, Wood, Woodus Rogers. Okay, it's his name. I thought it was a per, uh, type of person. But he can only be played if England has three locations, so that's not gonna happen right now. That was my turn. Now it is Draco's turn. So Draco, what are you up to? What are you gonna do? Well, he's gonna sail, of course. He's gonna go one. You can be in the same space as other players. One, two, three, four. And he can go up here or down, but this this is more spaces, so he, it's good for him since he's planning to do village actions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now Draco can do three village actions. So that, that's perfect for him. So his first action to build this explorer. That costs him seven out of his nine doubloons. And then he will take one of his little crew members over here and he will put him out. The explorer goes to the space number nine. So in Kumana here, there will be Draco's explorer. Now Draco can visit him on his next turn, basically. He can sail just one space over here and visit him. And then remember, if he does that, then it doesn't matter how many spaces he has sailed because that's only if he's going to do village actions like he's doing now. If he goes for use and assistant, then it doesn't matter how many spaces he has sailed. So he can set that up. And when he goes to this guy and misses him, he will get two doubloons and he will get to move three spaces in the exploration in the jungle. So that's a perfect setup for Draco. So he, he played this explorer. It goes to his um, tableau over here. And now, let's see, he has two more actions. He only has two doubloons though. And Draco has, like, now Draco has fulfilled one of his two assistants that he needs to put out here for his career card. So he just needs one more assistant. I think it's it's, it's, a bit, it's not that exciting, to be honest, but I think Draco's two more actions is going to be... I think it's going to be to just... Oh no, Draco's gonna do, because you can do as many free actions as you want, and a free action is to plan, to put out a card here on display. So Draco is going to put out a innkeeper, which is another assistant, and a mercenary. And he's going to put them out here in his planning area so he can keep them. He knows that he can build them later on. And that was a free action. So he still has two actions. One of them will be to discard his hand, which is one card. A harbor here that he's not going to build. And that gets him two coins. And then his third action is going to be to just pick up one coin. So in the end, he still has five coins here. And he needs six for this assistance and so on. So yeah, it's working out pretty good for him. That was his turn. But now he doesn't have any cards in hand. So he needs to draw four cards. And I'm not going to show them to you. I'm going to try this um, module out here. Tell me in the comment section, by the way. Do you like it when you, see, you get to see what Draco is doing? Or do you want me to have it more hidden? I think it could be fun to just, you know, simulate more from my perspective. And Draco is uh, sort of, you know, he's over there. But he's, yeah, he's playing his own thing. So it's my turn. So what do I do? I can sail and I was planning right to, I mean, I picked up this tobacco so that I could do Santo Domingo. I kind of want to have the most other monster builder though, because the thing is when I go to Santo Domingo, I can deliver tobacco, but then I can also discard my whole hand to get four coins, which is, you know, better than to do this as an, a village action. And then I will also get one point for each combat I've been in, but I haven't been in any, but that was sort of the plan. Because I'm not that excited. Well, I do like these pioneers in a way. Hmm. But I do have, remember, I do have those free actions. I can put the cards down in my planning area. 
like Draco did. So I think I will go one, two, and I will deliver a tobacco with this uh, symbol there. That will get me to put another disc over here, which means now I have unlocked uh, my hand size increase. So now I have one of these upgrades on my ship. So I have six in hand size instead. And I have also, for my uh, career card, I have done, let's see, I need to do three ship upgrades at least. I have done one of those now. Then I will put this, as a free actor, I will put this monster builder into my uh, planning area so I can build him later on. Because that is good to have. And then I'm going to discard these two to get four coins. Because I do need that money. And sadly I don't get any points because I haven't, you know, done any combat yet. So that was my turn. My I have no cards in hand. And now I get to draw up to six. And I'm just going to draw randomly now. Save money. Because, you know, six cards, there's a good chance I will get a bunch of different resources, right? So uh, some su sugar, tobacco, corn, tobacco, sugar. And there's a third monster builder. I could get three of them out. That would be crazy. That would be kind of nice, though. Wow. I can build this guy right away. You know, not right away, but on my next turn if I do village actions. So that was my turn. Now it is back to Draco. So what is Draco going to do? He was rushing up here, but now he's going to go a little bit slower, of course. He is going to go just one step and visit his little... Uh, what was it? Explorer that he, he placed out here. And the Explorer action, let's see, will give him two coins. And he will get to do three movement or up to three in the exploration track. So I haven't talked about it at all, but besides the whole sailing and all that, there's a track down here all the way through the jungle. Whoever gets first over here gets 10 points and you can get a lot of points and money and so on on the way here. There's also three quests out there in the jungle that you can complete. So Draco can go now, he can go one, two, or three spaces, up to three spaces. He could just go one and get three coins. But that would be kind of wasteful since, you know, he can go three spaces. He's just going to go, he's just going to run for it. He's going to go one, two, three, and he's going to pick up one coin. You get whatever you land on. And the thing is, Draco wants to rush this because, you know, when he gets past this base here, he gets three uh, uh, alliance or three reputation with one of the nations. And, you know, for his um, gold card over here, or his career card, he needs to have eight influence, influence it's called, uh, with one nation. So that could be three of those eight. So that's not bad at all. And also, later on here, when whoever passes this space, this blue line here first gets four points. Whoever second and everyone else gets two points. And then the same over here with the green line. So Draco might want to rush the jungle a bit. Not that he has like a goal for it in his uh, career, but anyway, it could give him a bunch of benefits along the way, right? And he could even pick up quests from here, which he needs two quests to, to complete that part of his career. So that was Draco's turn. He only went over there. Uh, he didn't use any cards, so he doesn't get to draw any. But he did get some money, so now he has four. He has eight. Okay, so now he can for sure get another assistant out there pretty soon. So my turn, and let's see. Now I've done this so far, I think I want to do some village actions as well, of course. Because I do want to, I mean, I want to, I could build another master builder and just set myself up for having a bunch of discounts, right? I mean, that's always good. No matter what strategy I'm going to use, it's always good to have those discounts. So it's going to cost me six minus one because I already have one out. So that's five and I do have five. And then I want to do some actions. I think I might even want to, I want to discard my whole hand. Oh, well. oh, I forgot something, by the way. When Draco uh, bought his uh, Explorer, put it out here, he also got this little um, Carpenter symbol. So the Synergy token, he got that one. And that means that some other cards will trigger off of that. So like if Draco gets... Let's see if I... Ha I think I had one here. That's why I remembered it all of a sudden. No, I don't have one of those. But like if you get the Anchor here, then you will get two extra income. Besides the two you get from the Quest Hunter normally. I do want to get my income up as well, but I think I will invest. It's kind of crazy. I will invest in having at least double monster builder. That's kind of cool. So let's get going. I need to move and I think I will move. I want to move at least four spaces. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. That will end me up next to Draco. Now I'm going to keep going four, five, six, seven. I'm going all the way over to Santa Marta. And now I get three actions in the village here. So my first action, I think, will be to... Oh, there's so many good cards, there's so much I want to do. 
our first action will be to build build out this monster builder so that's going to cost me five doubloons because i already have one so i get that discount so that's five and now from now on well, i get another three uh, points as well and from now on i get two discount that's just awesome so that's done, now we have two more actions, and I think... Well, I can't build anything else because they are way too expensive, I don't have any money. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna take one doubloon, that's one action. And then I'm gonna discard my whole hand to get two more doubloons. And it doesn't really matter, I mean, I'm getting rid of all these cards. But I'm getting to draw at the end of my turn, I'll draw six more, so I'll get new cards here anyway. I really like having that hand size increase so early in the game, really helps out. And let's see, Captain, oh he's pretty good, when you build him, you immediately get to return one of the brown discs to the general supply, so basically uh, that's like getting rid of one of those, uh, for those upgrades, so that's a good thing. The Grocer, get some income, okay well, I'm done with my turn, let's see what Draco will be doing. And I think now that he has visited his uh, assistant, now if he would have skipped by his assistant, come in here gone here but not visited then he will get two points for each assistant that you skip each round as well so that, that's also giving you some points so let's see i think draco would like to, yeah he would like to start he would like to get some um upgrades as well so he's going to go one two over to maracaibo and he's going to give up one of these sugars in order to get to place a disc there and i think draco he's gonna go a little bit of a different route here I think he wants some money quickly, so he's gonna take this here. Second time he does this, he gets five doubloons as a bonus, so that could be good for him. And he's going to put this out here on Maracaibo to indicate that he delivered sugar. And now he, he can also do this action, and this action is to just start a combat. So he's gonna to go into combat, and that's good for him. That's a way for him to get some reputation, influence with these nations. So this way this works is we have two stacks up here. I don't know why there's two stacks. I don't understand that because it's no difference. You just shuffle these up. But he's going to draw the top tile here. Top to combat tile. And it looks like this. And the way this works is. Let's see if we can get some focus here. The way this works is that he's going to choose one nation that he will represent. Because he's a mercenary, right? And this up here says that whichever nation is in the last place. In terms of how many places they have conquered out there on the board. He's going to get plus three strength. But now they're all tied, which means nobody gets anything. So he could go for France or Spain. He, that's four sort of combat power. Or he could go for England, which is only two. But then he will get three coins as well. I think Draco wants those coins. So he's going to represent England. So he's going to get two doubloons for that. Because, you know, they're not that strong. But they're like, oh, please come help us. We're going to pay you extra. So he gets two combat strength. And then he also started every player starts. With one combat strength over here that he could spend if he wants to in, to, in order to increase that 2 into a 3. He could also give up one of these little uh, guys here. But he doesn't want to do that because that's going to be the innkeeper I think later on. So he has 2 and so I think I think Draco is just going to. I can show you here. So we reveal 1. We cho He chose a nation. Now we determine the combat value which is going to be 2. And then he chooses an action. And you basically spend that combat value in order to do different actions. So for two, what he could do is get one influence with England. If he had five, he could have gotten two influence. And you can do both these. If, if he had like six, he could do get one influence and uh, conquer, like have England conquer a place out on the map. And he could go like over here, which would get him four doubloons right away as well. And with six, he could conquer some place that is already taken. So you can, you know we can have them fight. It's like the it's like a fighting going on, but it's not we're not involved. We're sort of helping the side that we want at the time. And then it's gonna keep the tie. You know, Draco is going to just take one influence with England. He's happy about that. And he needs to get eight with one nation, right? So obviously it's gonna be England that he's going to focus on. So he goes up here. And this tile goes onto his board. And I think it's a good time as I need to explain a little bit why you want to get these influence and why you want to support different nations. So out here, we have all these cubes representing England and you know cities that they have claimed. Now to the left of this, it's going to be a bit hard for you to see, but to the left of this, there's going to be one point, victory point symbol. So since they have one city out here, they have uh, the uh, St. Kitts over here, they already generate one point basically times whatever banner you have reached out here on the influence track. In this case, Draco is on the uh, times one. So right now, this is one point for Draco. It's one times one. 
But if he, if he makes sure that England gets another two cities out, or conquering two cities, then there's two symbols. It's going to be two times one. And then he can also, of course, increase this more. He, his goal is to get eight with one of them, and that's up here. That's times four. So, you know, this times this could be a lot of points there. But since, you know, Adraco is working on that, I might start working in you know, Spain or, you know, some other to, to you know, balance that out. And I need to get to, to uh, two influence in two of these. So I might do the other two or something. We'll see. That was his whole combat action. And uh, yeah, he's happy with that. He went to uh, Maracaibo, he delivered some sugar, and he did a combat action. Now he gets to draw back up to his hand size, so he gets one more card. And he's just gonna take one randomly here, he doesn't want to spend any money for that. So that was Draco's whole turn, now it is my turn. And I think that, let's see, I'm over here. So I ca can I complete a quest? So this quest over here requires two, two treasure maps. Do I have that? No, I have three, and then we look at the bottom symbol here. So I have three herbs, uh, one treasure map, and two spyglasses. So I don't have what's needed. This quest over here, though, wow, this is good. This requires to give up one combat strength, and I can do that. So I think I'd rather do that, actually. So I, I will go one, two, three, four, five over to La Ceiba. And instead of doing the action, like I could do two uh, village actions, instead I'm going to complete a quest. So I have to give up one of my combat strength for this, and I do have one that I started the game with. So I'm going to give that up, go to zero. And this basically represents me, you know, fighting a little bit to help these people out. And that's going to give me a reward. And the reward says here that I get two coins for every compass I have. Now there's uh, some, you know, like the... Uh, the quest hunter out here, he gives you another compass symbol. But to begin with, everyone has one compass on the actual player board on the ship. So I am going to get one times two coins. So I'm getting two coins for that. It's pretty good. And then the best thing with this tile is that I get to remove two of these brown upgrade tokens from my board. And uh, yeah, that's a whole upgrade I can do right away. And you know what? I think I think I will. Yeah, I think I will take these two. So this means that I have a new city action. So instead of you know doing a city action where I just get a coin, which is kind of lame, now I can do that and get a, a, a combat strength as well. So that you know increased my uh, action. And these two uh, tokens are just discarded. Just get rid of those. Also, you take this little uh, quest tile that you did and you flip it over. And this is a bit cute here because then you can fit it onto your ship and you start over here in the leftmost. And it fits in right there, and I have some, I don't know, like a toolbox I have here. If I keep getting these, when I get up here, I get three points. And when I go up here, I get two points. And then for every everyone else after that, I get two more points. So it's also a way to score some points doing those quests. Now, I should also mention that the, I haven't talked about that, but up here, we did have these prestige cards. And these are sort of like a round tracker, so we're going to play four rounds. And each at the beginning of each round, we're going to reveal one more. The first one that was revealed here is the um, min minister and this says it costs 20 you don't buy this card you invest in it it costs 20 doubloons and then you have to also place one of your crew members onto this becoming a priest or whatever the first one to do this get two points you also get this little royal symbol the little synergy symbol with a crown on it which can help some other cards some combos and this one says that in final scoring you will get three points for every synergy symbol you have, and you can have a total of five, there's five different, you can only have one of each. So this could be worth 15 points if you work on that. And one of these other cards that we haven't revealed yet might give points for having completed quests. So that could be a thing. Also, I needed to do four, I need to do four quests in order to complete my career card over here, uh, or to do this part, which will get me four coins. Or four doubloons. So now I have done two upgrades out of the three I need, and I've done one out of the four quests I need. Okay, so it's it's a rolling on here, and now I get to draw back up cards, and I already have all the cards because I didn't spend any. And I yeah, that's about it. That's about it for my turn. So Draco's turn again. Now Draco is over here. Let's see what is he, what is he going to do? Let's see, does Draco have any corn? Yes, he does. Okay. So then Draco is going to go one, two, over to uh, Car Cartagena. And he's going to give up a card with a corn on it, which means he can put out 
one of his upgrade tokens and he's gonna take this one so he gets five doubloons instantly so that's pretty good for him. i mean he, now he has a lot of money and then he is going to place it over here to indicate that this has been delivered corn to and now he gets to do two of his these actions moving in the exploration track or in the jungle so now Draco could just go one spot, that will let him take another um, of his upgrade tiles and just, you know, toss it. But he's going to go one, two. This means, first of all, that he passed this line, which means he gets three influence with a nation of his choice. And he also landed here, which means he gets one military strength. So let's take that military strength over here. And then three influence, and he's going to go for England, of course. So he's going to go one, two, three, and he's getting, you know, he's halfway over to his eight that he needs for his career it's fun how all the players have these different goals that they're chasing after then at the end of his turn he is going to draw back up he spent one card for that corn so he's going to draw one randomly here and that was his turn now it's my turn and i think now it's time for me to sort of end the first round so you're going to see how that works and so i am going to go let's see if i had another military strength i could complete this quest but I don't, so... <laughs> but Draco could on his next turn, so yeah, I'm going to end it. I'm going to go one, two. And once we get up here, then there's these uh, red hand symbols, so we have to stop there. The first thing I will do, the first player to get here gets to do this action, which is a either a combat or move two spaces in the exploration. So, do I want to do a combat? I, I don't have any combat strength and so on. It's basically just probably just going to net me one influence. Now I'm going to move two spaces in the jungle, so let's pan down here, and I'm going to go... I'm just going to move one. It's up to two spaces. I'm just going to move one, getting three more doubloons. I do need that money, right? And then I will move on here, automatically, sort of. The ship will sail. Now, in the first three rounds, you go over here. In the last round, the fourth round, you go up here and do this. And the first player to end it in the fourth round, to end the game, gets three plus five. It's eight points. Just realized there's no difference between these. I don't know why it's not just one space. Anyway, so I'm going to go over here. Since I was the first one to get here, I will get three points. So I'm on the board. Three points over here. So three to zero with Draco, but it's you know, long to go. Then I am going to, we're both going to do this track over here. This is what you do, like an interim scoring. And then I, I, this track up here is for the final scoring. So the first thing that happens here is I can buy a card from my hand or from my planning area. And I get to refill my hand up to my hand size, or I can get two points. But I think now I will buy a card. So I think it was the captain I was planning for, or, or the innkeeper. Yeah, I think I'll do an innkeeper. But then again, I don't need to get into this. I shouldn't, you know, it's, it's always this at the Euro games. You can't do everything. It's like, I want to I want to do this, I want to do that. But I need to focus on what does my career tell me to do, basically. I need to do a bunch of quests. I need to upgrade the ship more. I need to get more influence. So... The innkeeper is not going to help me with any of that. Wow, wow, this is going to give me four income though. That wouldn't be bad at all. Yeah. The problem is I immediately when I build this, I get one point for every combat token. I don't have any combat tokens. That would be so inefficient. This grocer. Well, in order to buy him, I need to discard. It has a special requirement. Discard three identical goods. So can I even do that? Yes, I can. I have three. All these three cards have tobacco on it. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to buy the grocer, which could normally cost seven, but I have two discount because of my uh, monster builders, so that only cost me five. So I'm paying five. And then I have to discard three cards. It doesn't matter because I will get to you know, refill my hand. So I'll discard all three of these tobaccos. Just so happens that I have those. And then when I build him, he is going to, first of all, he's going to get me two... Uh, money income so I'm going to increase up here so I'm going to go up to 10 and I am about to get my income really soon here so that's good that's getting me two coins back right away and then you know more each round and if I ever get this little house as a synergy token I will get four more incomes so I need, and now I'm going to start looking for that for a way to get that house I don't see any way right now but it's going to be there sooner or later so he's built the grocer and I got my income and now I get to refill my hand. I only have two cards. So I will draw four more. Let's see if we can get one of those. A way to get a house out. Oh, there we go. Conquer village. 
It's expensive though, 15 doubloons, but that will let me get that synergy token, which means instantly the grocer would in upgrade basically, and I would get four more on the income track. So that's awesome. I, I'm gonna save up for this, up, I think. Uh, that's gonna be great. And this one it will also get me four or two more victory points if I have the medal or the crown. So they, they all trigger off each other in a fun way, okay. That was my uh, choice there. Now it's Draco's turn. Even the Draco is over here. His round has also ended. It's, it's kind of interesting. So he also gets the choice. Two points or buy a card. And he has all the money in the world. So I can't see why he wouldn't. Yeah, Draco is going to... He's going to get his uh, quest hunter out here. So that's uh, from his planning area. He can buy it from the planning area. So that costs seven. Doubloons, so he can pay that, no problem. He doesn't have any discounts. And that will get him two points at the end of the game, but he will also get him a permanent one of these compass symbols. So now he has two. So every time he does a quest, he will get a you know, better reward. He will get two income, but he will also get two more if he finds that house. So he's also looking for the house, basically. So we put that out there, and now he will get two income up here, just like me. So he's also up to 10. So yeah, that, that was a good uh, thing for him. And now he needs to refill. But he, you know, he built the card from his planning area, which means he didn't spend any cards, which means he doesn't refill his hand. Now, since that's done, now let's go to the next one, which is income. So I, well, both of us will get 10 doubloons, like that. And then, if we had built up any income over here, this is the victory point track, then we would start, you know, earning victory points every time we go to over to um, Havana again. So that's sort of the, the circle of the game. But that's done, and then we will remove all of these little tokens, so now they can get new deliveries to them in the next round. We will remove all the cards from the you know, market, basically. Discard those and put out four new cards. And then we will reveal another prestige card up here. So now we get the cathedral, and it says, well, it costs 25 to invest in, and it says that, well, whoever does it first gets two points, you get the uh, crown symbol, the synergy token, and then your income track VPs will be doubled in the final scoring. And the way it works is that in the final scoring, you, we don't get the money from up here because we don't need money for anything. It doesn't count for any points. But if we get up to these points, the scoring places here, like here, if we get to 22 income of doubloons, we also, in the last round, we will get four. Instead of the 22 doubloons, we'll get four uh, victory points instead. And if we have invested in that cathedral, then we will get a total of 12 instead because we'll you know, do it two, two more times, basically. That's pretty cool. And now we will do the quest. Like if we were playing a, a sort of the quest mode, the, the um, campaign mode, then we would now reveal something new here. Something would happen. We would read a little story snippet. And finally, all ships will go to Havana. So it, Draco never got the chance to go here. It's like that because I ran into the, the end here before him. And now we go into the next round where we will, you know, it's Draco's turn. Since I went here, it's Draco's turn and he will start moving. Basically, that's how the game works. I'm not going to show you the whole game because it's fairly long. And it's the, the more we keep going, the more it gets complicated. And there's all these strategies and all these choices of cards. And I haven't played the game that much. So I'm not that good at it yet. But uh, I really, really enjoy it. I can really recommend it. If you like Euro games, and especially with this sort of quest thingy going on here, where we would start, you know, modifying the map and so on as we go. That is really cool. So, Maracaibo, hope you enjoyed this run tree. If you did, press the like button and subscribe to the channel. And also, tell me in the comment section if you have any questions or concerns. Have a great evening or morning or whenever you're watching. Take care. Bye-bye. Be like Draco. Follow Board Games with Niramas on Facebook at BGW Niramas.